Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cam. Today I'll be talking about how to fly in Star Citizen. I've covered other topics on getting started in Star Citizen, so if you haven't checked those out, I'll throw up a link on the top right so you can start there instead. But if you're here to learn how to fly in Star Citizen, stick around. As I've covered in previous videos, when you first get started in Star Citizen, you will be on a planet and after you get to the spaceport, you'll need to be able to leave. Luckily, the term space sim is used a bit loosely, so it's not so difficult to fly as you think. Not like something intense, like Microsoft's Flight Simulator. The basics are pretty simple. Once you've reached the Aesop kiosk at the spaceport of your choice and retrieved your ship and get to the hangar, you'll get into your ship. You'll either climb up a ladder or into a ramp. Look for highlighted sections of the ship by holding down the F button. Once you're in, make your way into the pilot seat and take in your surroundings. I'll cover everything you see here a bit later. But first, let's go ahead and turn your ship on by pressing either R or U. And that's it. You don't have to flip 10 or 20 switches like in real flight simulators. The ship is completely turned on. If you want to manually turn things on or off, you can do so. If you hold down F and move your mouse around, you'll see lots of options, one of which is power on. Most ships will have engines on options as well. Just be careful, some smaller ships like fighters have an eject button. You definitely don't want to press that by mistake. Besides using R or U, you can also turn on or off individual components. Turn off the engines by pressing the I button the shields with the O button, or weapons with the P button. Now that you've got everything turned on, you can just take off, right? Actually, no. If you try to take off, you'd quickly realize you can't go anywhere. You'll have to actually request to take off so that way the hangar doors open. Luckily, you don't have to have a lengthy conversation with an air traffic control. Starting in version 3.18, this is as easy as pressing Alt-N. If you're watching this while in 317.5, Live is still active, you'll need to assign a key bind in the settings. Or press F11, choose Friends, and click the icon to the right of the spaceport and the hangar doors will soon open. Wait for the doors to fully open. You can damage your ship or explode if you clip the doors on your way out. The next thing to do is to make sure your mouse is completely centered by keeping it in the center of the reticle on your HUD or heads-up display. If you move your mouse and you're not on the ground, your ship will point to where you move your pointer. Go ahead and hold the space bar down on your ship and your ship will start to lift off the floor and out of the hangar. Once you've completely cleared the hangar, let go of the spacebar. This is a good time to mention that this is how you strafe up as well, and to strafe down, you hold the control button. To start moving forward, press and hold W. While moving forward, slowly move your mouse in different directions. Your mouse controls your pitch, or direction of travel. If you let go of W, your ship will come to a halt gradually by itself. There are forward-facing thrusters that make this happen. To reverse, simply hold the S button and the same thing will happen when you let go. Your ship is capable of thrusting in many directions at once. Unlike a real airplane, it doesn't have control surfaces but instead uses maneuvering thrusters to change attitude, pitch, and yaw. It is planned for future releases for aerodynamics to be more simulated and control surfaces will be a thing, but for now we just rely on the game Magic Thrusters. You can also roll your ship, roll left with Q and roll right with E. With these controls you can fly in full 360 degrees of motion. Because you're starting out in the atmosphere of a planet, you'll notice that you can't really go too fast. Because while these are powerful ships, atmospheric density is simulated here, so there is drag happening on your ship. But the higher you climb towards space, and the atmosphere thins, you'll start going faster. Go ahead and fly to space. Using your mouse, 
point the ship to 90 degrees using the pitch indicator, which is straight up from the surface. Using your mouse wheel to scroll up all the way, observe the little triangle on the left side. Press the C key for cruise control so you don't have to keep holding down W all the time. You can also hold shift to use your afterburners, but be careful not to let it stay in the red for too long as this can actually damage your main thrusters. Welcome to space. You'll notice that not only does the ship move faster forward, but also turns and rolls faster as well. This is a good time to talk about the limits of your ship. You see that bar to the left of your HUD? That is your speed limiter bar and also shows SCM. SCM stands for Space Combat Maneuvers and is basically the max speed in which your ship can safely maneuver using the IFCS or Intelligent Flight Control System to keep your ship going where you want it to go. If you're going faster than a ship's SCM speeds, you'll notice you'll overshoot your maneuvers and can cause unwanted impacts like into other ships or asteroids. So you're flying. Now what? Sure, you could just fly like this, but just like in real life, space is huge. It would take hours or even days to just reach another point of interest. Luckily, we have some borrowed alien technology called quantum drives. Just like warp technology in Star Trek or hyperdrives in Star Wars, this allows you to travel very quickly. Go ahead and press the B button to enable the quantum drive. You'll notice a lot happening on the screen suddenly. In the very center, you'll see a new targeting reticle appear, and secondly, a bunch of little diamond and other shapes. The circle reticle in the middle is your indicator that when you line up with a destination, it has calculated the destination and spooled up the drive. Once everything reaches 100%, it's ready to go. But where to go? Let's talk about all these other symbols on the screen. If you move your mouse around, you'll notice that these are all destinations. The small diamonds are faraway Lagrangian points, also known as gas clouds. The larger diamonds are orbital markers or comma rays around planets or moons. The single circles are planets, and the double circles are moons. Squares are space stations. When looking at a destination on a moon or a planet, you'll see different icons, such as an American baseball home plate, which is where you started at. Each planet has one main spaceport with that symbol. You'll see these hexagon shapes as well. Those are smaller outposts. If any of these shapes are dashed, that means they are on the opposite side of the planet from you. To make things a bit easier to navigate, however, we have the star map. Sometimes it's easier to use it because a lot of points of interest will overlap and make it difficult to get to the destination you want to. Pull up the star map with the F2 button. Your Moby Glass will come up and you'll see this basic map of the Stanton system. This is not a final version and is meant to be updated in future releases by CIG because it is a bit buggy. But I digress. To choose a location, simply click on it with the mouse and choose Set Destination. If everything is working properly, it will calculate a route for you. If it doesn't, it means the computer can't calculate it and you might have to jump somewhere else first for a few seconds before trying again. You'll notice now that you've got a path calculated. Only the next destination is shown on your HUD, instead of all of them at once. Center your quantum reticle on that destination marker and wait for the two indicators to reach 100%. Depending on your quantum drive, which can be upgraded, this will go slowly or quickly. Next, press and hold the B button, and you will quantum to that location. Now, depending on the size of your ship and the quantum drive's fuel consumption, you may not be able to go to the father's destination. Some drives, like the military quantum drives, will eat fuel faster, but they get you to your location much faster. Since you're just starting out, you more than likely have a starter ship. If you have the cutter, you might have 6,000 quantum fuel right now, but that is subject to change because that's way too much for a starter ship to have. Most starter ships have around 450 to 650 liters of fuel. If your quantum trip takes you to multiple stops, simply reorient your ship to the next marker. It will not do this automatically, although I wish it did. Once you've reached your destination, press B to turn off your quantum drive. That's it. The basics of flight and star citizen. 
There are more topics that branch off of basic flight, but those will be in a separate video, like space or atmospheric combat, cargo hauling, mining, the list goes on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for future updates. Stay safe and diverse, citizens.